we shall begin with a moment of silence and prayer. I invite Reverend Sister Lalita Ramos to lead us into prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters, Jesus promised to be present in the midst of his disciples whenever they gather in his name. Let us raise our minds to God so that in his Holy Spirit, he may guide us to the whole truth. Breathe on us, O breath of God, fill us with life anew, that we may love thee and the things you love, and do what you would do. Breathe on us, O breath of God, until our heart is pure, until our will is one with yours, to do and to endure. O breath of God, breathe on us. May our will be inclined to your will, until our selfish part of us glows with your fire divine. O breath of God, Breathe on us, so that we shall never die, but live with you perfect life for all eternity. We shall pray together without unmuting the Our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed you among women, and blessed is the fruit of Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, who prayed for us sinners, now and at the end of the world. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, and ever shall be. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Lalita Thomas, for invoking the Spirit on the gathering and leading us into prayer. Good. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, Your Excellencies, dear Monsignors, Reverend Fathers, Sisters, Good morning to you all. I welcome you wholeheartedly to, on behalf of the CCBA office parents and the national coordinator for the Synod for a Synod Church members present here, Mr. Nigel Fernandez, Sister Lalita Thomas, and me. The scope of the meeting is simple: to train ourselves, to train ourselves to the diocesan consultation towards the second session of the 16th General Assembly of the Senate. So this is this training is meant for our diocesan consultation at the local church. And this is towards the second session of the 16th General Assembly. Good. We have three sections in our training this morning. Number one, I will present to you the summary of the synthesis report, which is here published by ATC together with CCBI. The so-called 41-page report, which has been already shared to you and to all the local ordinaries. The synthesis report of the first session. In the second section, we will see the roadmap. That is what we are going to do now at the local church towards the second session. And thirdly, I will discuss with you how to use the worksheet that has been sent to you, which will be used for the diocesan consultation and the drafting of the synthesis. Having set the outline of the meeting, I now enter into the first one, that is the summary of the synthesis report. If you have this book with you, or if you have your 41-page document, either on your computer 
or on your mobile in the PDF form, you could follow the same. And this particular presentation will be shared and already it has been shared to all the diocese and contact person through their email IDs. Good. I share my screen with you. I hope I'm able to view my screen. So this is the original document, the orange colored document in 41 pages and printed by ATC in the blue colored book. Okay, 16th Ordinary General Assembly of the Synod of Bishops first session. A Synodal Church in Mission Synthesis Report. I'm going to now present to you how the synthesis report came to be, the background, and what work went behind from our local church to the universal church, and what are its main contents, especially the highlights. I gratefully acknowledge the work of Reverend Dr. Vincent Chinnadurai in formulating this presentation. Good. The outline of the presentation is as follows. Number one, situating the Synod Synthesis Report in its context. Two, the milestones of the first session. Three, the three Cs of the first session. Four, highlights of the synthesis. Five, moving forward. Six, reflections on the synthesis. Number one. Situating the synthesis report, that is journey made so far. So this situate this synthesis report is situated in the context of the synod for a synodal church that happened in three phases. We began with the diocesan phase in October 21, that went up to August 22. Then continental phase, as far as our continent is concerned, we belong to the FABC, where we had the continental phase from October 22 to April 23. Then we have just completed the first session of the universal phase and we are now moving towards the second session. And what are the words that characterize these phases? At the diocesan phase, we had discussion. At the continental phase, we had discernment. And now at the universal phase, we have deliberation. I repeat, Discussion was held at the diocesan phase. Discernment was held at the continental phase. And now deliberation is going to happen at the universal phase. So at the outset, let's make it clear. We are not going to engage in a diocesan discussion or consultation, but only deliberation in a smaller group. And the documents that have come so far from Rome are as follows. Number one, linea menta, preparatory document. Vadi Mekum Handbook. These two documents were used for the diocesan phase. The second one, DCS, Document for Continental Stage, which was a kind of synthesis of all the synthesis that received across the world. This document was used for our working for the second phase, that is DCS, while in the discernment phase. The third one, synthesis reported as the prior to that we had, the Instrumentum Laboris, which in fact, let this let the way to the synthesis report that we have. The documents we are sent to Rome are as follows. Number one, after the diocesan phase, you as the local ordinary or as the diocesan contact person prepared the 10 page synthesis at the end of the diocesan phase. This synthesis was sent to Senate desk at the CCBI and Senate secretariat in Rome. Then we had regional synthesis. Like in the CCBI, we have 14 regions. All the 14 regional deputy secretaries collected the diocesan synthesis of their own regions and made a regional synthesis and they sent to us for our own perusal. Then we had the National Synod at the CCBI, after which we formulated the National Synthesis. This National Synthesis was sent to the FABC, which in turn collected from all the episcopal conferences belonging to the FABC and we made a response to the document for continental stage and that was the second major document then other continental assemblies also made their own responses to the dcs then finally there was a document of the digital synod convoked by synod secretariat in rome so these are the documents that we have sent to rome and here the work of the dcp was very relevant and significant in the first stage in the preparation of the 10 page synthesis and later they also assisted at our response for response to the document for continental stage good what we have now what we have now is the synthesis report this is called synthesis report of the 
first session of the 16th general assembly of the senate again i say it has been published by the atc publishers we have mr nigel fernandez the ceo with us and we are grateful to the atc for bringing out all the documents immediately on time and with a lot of elegance this is so called 41 page document because in the a4 size format it is 41 pages originally written in italian and translated to other languages and now we have deputed regional deputy secretaries to take up this work of translating the synthesis report to regional languages so that we are able to uh, reach the, the fruits of the synthesis report to all the people across the country then it has been voted by the senate participants good the document has three parts 20 chapters or 20 titles and each chapter is divided into three sections kindly of these three words three parts number one number two 20 chapters or 20 titles number three each title or each chapter is divided into three sections and what is the scope of the document it gives primarily in the introductory session in section it tells it's meant for deliberation at local churches the episcopal conferences and intercontinental assemblies good now we go to the milestones of the first session like how this particular document came to be so again in fact we are aware how the first session went on it began in fact with the prayer vigil on september 30th then general congregations working groups because this was a major uh, days were dedicated for this the so-called conversation in the spirit method then we received a letter to the people of god from the synod participants then we received the synthesis report on October 28th. Now we are here towards the journey towards the second session. So now somewhere we are here in this orange circle, continue the journey towards October 2024. And these are some key events that took place during the Synod first session. Good. The three C's of the first session are, like before we go to the three C's, more or less the synod participants are happy with the synod that has been held now because the synod was different from the earlier synods how it was different number one they said earlier they entered for the synod of bishops so only the bishops were allowed but now they entered for the synod with many non-bishops even with the rights to vote that was the first difference secondly earlier synod was an event event means like it would happen in a particular space and particular time it would begin in a particular day and conclude in a particular day but now they say this particular synod is not an event but an experience like an ongoing experience like if, even after the end of the synod the experience continues to run thirdly earlier synods focused on the products the outcomes for example amoris letitia was the product christus it was the product are the apostolic exhortation the post synodal apostolic exhortation but now the present synod it may come out with an apostolic exhortation but as far as the status of the process is now is concerned what is given is process not the product but the process the process of entering into the into the synodality through the conversation in the spirit method so this is the uh, major different that we can more or less say agreeing with the synodal participants the three c's that stand out in the first session are number one conversation in the spirit or spiritual conversation where the engagement of dialogue or del a deliberation takes place in a form of conversation where i you we so first i speak then i speak on what you have spoken then together we arrive at a consensus the so i you b movement and each section of these three i you b punctuated by moment of silence so that we, we allow the spirit to talk to us and we are not keen on talking ourselves out that's number one number two communion through baptismal identity so baptismal identity was the key thing that brought all the participants together, not the hierarchical identity or charismatic identity. Thirdly, complementarity. There was complementarity of gender, complementarity of spirit and matter, 
complementarity of silence and speech and complementarity of gifts like hierarchical gifts complementing with charismatic gifts so this type of complementarity was celebrated at the first session good so we just began what went behind that is documents to rome documents from rome and how the synthesis has come to be and what are the three uh, parts 20 titles then three sections in each title now we go to see the highlights of the synthesis so the synthesis report excluding the introduction and conclusion it has three parts part one the face of the synodal church part two all disciples all missionaries part three weaving bonds building communities if you have run through the document you would have understood that these three parts in a way run the three tagline words the so-called communion participation mission earlier when the synod began at the diocesan phase and later went to the continental phase we had the tagline as communion participation mission c p m but now in the instrumental laboratories there was a slight change mission has come to the middle so now it is no more cpm but c m p communion mission participation because holy father tells mission stands at the center of communion and participation and mission in fact unites communion and participation and these three parts in fact run parallel to communion mission participation i shall explain part one the face of a synodal church here how together in communion we make the face of the synodal church number two all disciples all missionaries so mission comes to the picture part two part three weaving bonds and building communities for synodality that is a kind of synodal formation that takes place through through participation so that way c m p is again running through all these three parts part one part two part three good we go to introduction introduction in fact situates the document in the context of the church and the world so the church which is now becoming more inclusive more welcoming and the church which celebrates everyone's presence the church which reaches to the poor the migrants the marginalized and the church which is ready to uh, take bold steps towards the abusers of sexual abuse financial abuse administrative abuse so this, the context of the church is present in the context of the world the so called the post pandemic world and the warring world the, war, the different wars happen to in different countries so this is the context with which we need to reflect on synodality the experience of the participants is spelled out like how they experienced in the synodal floor thirdly the document invites towards a movement in synodality good part one the face of the synodal church as said earlier this could be summarized into one word communion it reads communion is the identity of the synodal church being part of the synodal church is an experience and to understand it one must live it it has its communion in the trinity and is being sent towards the poor all the people towards the eastern churches and towards other christians so here communion is based on the trinity or trinitarian communion that once that communion is established we move towards all people the poor the migrants and everyone then towards other churches especially eastern churches and towards other christians so that way interfaith movement is there interchurch movement is there and ecumenical movement is there in the part one part two all disciples all missionaries all the baptized are called disciples and missionaries this section underscores the mission of all the faithful deacons priests women bishops of the local churches and the bishop of rome two things to be noted number one here there is a very beautiful insight where it reads the church is mission so we no more say the church has mission again it says every individual is mission not every individual has mission it means mission becomes not the work of an individual but the identity of an individual identity of the church that is very unique in this part too and the second one constantly the document refers to pope the holy father as the bishop of rome in a way it opens space for 
collegiality and synodality, not negating the primacy of the Petrine office. So very beautifully, this insight comes, comes along in part two, all disciples, all missionaries. In part three, weaving bonds, building communities, it in fact talks about participation, which focuses on the joint formation of all the people of God, mission in digital environment, strengthening the structures of participation. So these three are the key highlights, joint formation, like how together with the priests and religious, even the lay faithful could together be formed, number one. Number two, digital environment, how it affects and how it has to be used. Thirdly, how to strengthen different structures of participation. For example, the parish council, our diocese and pastoral council, our college of consultants, even synodal assembly. So how these different structures could be made further use for the synodal church. This is part three. And in conclusion, more or less, it repeats whatever has been said in the introduction. In general, each chapter or uh, each title is divided into three sections. Number one, convergences. For example, let's take now, if you have the document with you, kindly take page number 22. If you have the printed book or if you have it uh, following from PDF, kindly take title or chapter four. It reads, People in Poverty, Protagonists of the Church's Journey. So I'm reading from part one. That is part one, title four, poverty, people in poverty. We are now going to say how the document is divided into three parts. I said convergences, matters for consideration, thirdly, proposals. Number one, convergences. What are the convergences? Convergences mean the areas of thought and practice that are agreed upon by all. More or less, all the central participants have agreed upon. For example, I read from here from the document, Title for Convergences D. Alongside forms of material poverty, many also experience spiritual poverty. So this particular expression, more or less we, more or less we agree today, like in the world, there is both material poverty and spiritual poverty. Good. So this is something which is agreed upon by all, that is convergence. In the second section, we have matters for consideration, like the areas that need further clarification and understanding. We shall take one example from the same section, sorry, same title, chapter, that is matter for consideration, L. The church must be honest in examining how it meets the demands of justice among those who work in its affiliated institutions so as to ensure it acts with consistency and integrity. For example, we on the one hand talk about poverty. On the other hand, we have pompous celebrations when it comes to festive occasions or feasts and novenas. So now, how do we in come to a kind of consistency? Like, how do we remain consistent as far as our stand is concerned? So here, now how we can, at the local church think, maybe how we can really experience poverty at the local church. Or in a way, like in a parish situation, we tax the people for fees. So, so suppose we fix thousand rupees for Christmas celebrations, every family has to give. So we don't consider the poor person who may have to struggle a lot to bring that thousand rupees. Oftentimes our decision making is based on the rich people. So now the document challenges us, like how to arrive at a kind of a integrity, honesty, as far as the stand is concerned, how to make it more inclusive. So this is a matter for consideration because each local church has to consider how to bring this about. So that is now second section, matters for consideration. And the third one we have, proposal. Proposal here, it means the direct proposals, some are to the local church, some are to the Episcopal conferences, some are to the intercontinental assemblies. So here in Yen, again from the same chapter I read, Yen, it reads, the church's social doctrine is a too little known resource. This needs to be addressed. Local churches are invited not only to make its contents better known, but to foster its reception through practices that put its inspiration into action. So it gave, it, here it gives a proposal. What's the proposal? Make the local church understand the doctrine of the social doctrine of the church. Like this is, uh, this has been for, there for a long time, but more most of the times we have not referred to or we have not talked about. So here. The synodal assembly 
recommends that each local church brings forth maybe a kind of printed form or a translation or a recollection or a workshop or a seminar on the church's social doctrine. So this is a direct proposal to the local church. So this is how each chapter or each title is divided. Once again, convergence, once again, the second one matters for consideration and the third one proposals. Good. And some expressions that draw our attention from the entire document are as follows. Synodal culture. Earlier we talked about synodal attitude, then synodal spirituality. But now it talks about a different word, synodal culture. So kind of a, a way of life that has to be in the church, especially in the church's institutions. Then we talk about formation for synodality, like each one needs to be formed because unless and otherwise we are formed, we can never accommodate synodality. Third one, joint formation of the clergy, religious and the lay faithful. Next one, conversation in the spirit at all levels. Like for example, in a parish council, how this method could be employed. Like a, each one talks, each one listens, and finally we arrive at the consensus. Oftentimes what happens in the parish council, either parish priest dictates or one or two persons, office bearers, they dictate, and the meeting comes to a conclusion. But now, through this method, all will be able to talk, all will be able to share their opinion, and all will be able to respond to somebody else. That is the moment of you, I, you, me. The next one, pastoral structures to be reorganized. For example, the pastoral structure in the diocese and pastoral council, so far it has been only consultative. Maybe how we can make it decision-making, especially when it comes to the decision of the temporal goods, administration of temporal goods, alienation of properties. So for these things, we could revise, in fact, the structure. Then canonical and theological revisit to the structures, especially the diagnosis to the women, or regular monitoring or audit of the resources of uh, uh, priests, deacons, and bishops. So here, they, what is necessary is theological revisit and canon canonical structures are necessary. Then it talks about missionary dynamism, charismatic sign, women as partners in mission, regular audit of priests and deacons, review of the selection of the candidates for the episcopate, where it tells like the lay faithful also could be consulted because now the embassy, ah, the Holy See con consults only the bishops and the priests, maybe some religious, but the lay faithful also could be taken into for, for consultation. Reviewing the performance of the bishops, especially the administration of the temporal goods, the alienation of properties, then grouping of churches, evangelical solidarity. So these expressions you would come across constantly and they in fact stand out for our own Indian church. Good. In general, the only word that revolves around synodality is mission, evangelization of the joy of the gospel. Good. Now we get into the parts and chapters. Just we'll run through the titles to see what is the content of each title or each chapter. We begin with part one face of the synodal church. Here it has seven titles or seven chapters. First one, synodality, experience and understanding. So here, in fact, it does not give any definition. So it gives more or less a kind of a, a characteristic features of synodality because we haven't arrived at a kind of a conclusive definition on synodal synodality. We are not able to really form. So only certain characteristic marks maybe that would define synodality that could be inclusion celebration of diversity so these are some expressions of synodality and they are given in title one title two gathered and sent by the trinity so here trinitarian communion becomes the foundation stone for synodal church so here constantly the section talks about the communitarian dimension that evolves from trinity third one entering the community of faith Christian initiation. Here, in fact, it brings about the concept of baptismal identity. How baptismal identity makes us persons in communion. Then number four, how to this communion, all the people have to be brought in, especially the poor, the protagonists of the church's journey. Then in number five, a church out of every tribe, tongue, people, and nation. So here, in fact, talks, talks about the inclusion of all the people. Then six, Eastern churches and its relation to the Latin church traditions. Seven, on the road towards Christian unity. So it talks about ecumenism or our relationship, relationship with the other Christian churches. 
this comprises all these titles comprise part one face of the Cyrodiil church then part two all disciples all missionaries we have eight to thirteen titles church's mission earlier i said it does no more the church has mission but the church is mission because the church is does not a church has, does not have a work of mission but identity so from the ident from the work we are now moving towards identity so the church's identity is mission then nine it talks about women in the life and mission of the church like how they participate in different celebrations but still how they are left out it talks about women religious how they are at, in a few places they are not paid well remunerated well so those things are brought in women in the life and mission of the church then consecrated life and lay associations and movements like how the consecrated life all the religious institutions could collaborate with the lay associations in contributing their charism to the local church and to the universal church then 11 deacons and priests in a synodal church 12 the bishop in ecclesial communion then 13 bishop of rome in the college of bishops maybe 13 may not be relevant to us directly because we are at the local church we don't discuss so some titles are directly relevant some titles are not then part three weaving bonds building communities 14 a synodal church to formation, like how formation has to happen at different levels, so that people are committed to this uh, to this culture of synodality. Then 15, ecclesial discernment and open question. So here, in fact, it talks about welcoming the LGBTQ or giving communion again to the remarried or how these people have to be handled. So these open questions are there in 15. Then 16, towards a listening and accompanying church, like how the church has to accompany more. Again, it talks about LGBTQ here. Then 17, mission in the digital environment, how the digital spaces could be used, how training has to be given to all the people who are involved in digital mission. Then 18, structures for participation. It talks about different participatory structures like DPC, Diocesan Pastoral Council, College of Consultants, even Synodal Assembly as a structure of participation. Then 19, Groupings of churches within the communion of the whole church. This is not relevant to us in the local church because it talks about the kind of a continental assemblies coming together. Then 20 synod of bishops and ecclesial assemblies. So here 20 also is not relevant to the local church direct. It talks about how the synod can affect the entire functioning of the universal church. Good. Now we move forward. What's next? So now we need to return home the home of our hearts, parishes, dioceses, episcopal conferences, intercontinental assemblies, to pause, sit, reflect, and interiorize the contents of the synthesis. So again, our work is to return home. So now from Rome, we are now back to home, where all the peripheries are brought inside so that we are able to make them as the center. Good. This six will be taken in the worksheet. I now pause here for your quick response. So we have just concluded section one, which is relatively long. Other things are shorter than this. So we just introduced the blue book from the ATC the synthesis report, or the so-called 41 page synthesis report. A quick review would be three parts, 20 titles, three sections. So this would be a takeaway from section one. Good. Any doubt or anything you would like to add Suppose you have gone through the document, you'd like to share an insight with the group, you are welcome. You could unmute and talk. Maybe for about two minutes. Any doubt on this? Do you respect that this whole document is discussed in the diocesan level? Yes, uh, not the diocesan level, only with the group. Yes, Father Sebastian. Okay. We'll come to that image next one. Okay, good. How to test this? Good. Thank you, Father Bala. Uh, yes, Father. Who were these uh, non-bishop participants in the first session, Father? Okay. Who were invited? Uh, non-bishops were like priests were there, sisters, religious were there. Okay, so lay faithful. So they okay. arrived through the, the intercontinental assembly. So we had Sister Lalita Thomas. Okay. Of FABC. So these are the non bishops we talk about. Okay, Father. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Father Bala. Good. Very good. 
Shall we move to the next section? Fine. Yes. It's the road map. I share my screen with you. Good. I hope you are able to view my screen. On December 22, Cardinal Ferravo, the president of the CCBI, sent a circular to all the member bishops, that is, all the local churches. This circular has been sent to all the diocese and contact persons as well. So here, he gives, in fact, quoting from the letter from Senate Secretariat, Rome. He tells what is expected now. Here, two words are there, two expressions, we could say. Level of deepening, level of broadening. Two words, deepening and broadening. First one, deepening. What is the meaning of level of deepening? It reads, promoting a reflection that focuses on the theme of differentiated co-responsibility in the mission of all the members of the people of God. So here at the local church consultation, you always keep in mind, so like we shall not go strictly for following title after title. So the general uh, feeling that runs through the document is co-responsibility in the mission. Like, is there co-responsibility in the mission as far as the local church is concerned? So you deepen that particular experience of co-responsibility and see what are the challenges that are there towards the co-responsibility, like clericalism is there in this area, and like some things that we had in the diocesan phase again may come up. But don't worry, we are just going to deepen the experience. That is A. B, level of broadening. It reads, continuing to promote new initiatives to help our local churches to grow as a synodal church in mission and to collect and transmit testimonies and best practices to be sent to synod secretariat. So here, level of broadening, like what works at scale will work for everyone like what works in the local church may work for other people for example in your local church you have a kind of a village structure where all people are involved not only the christians but also non-christians in a decision making as far as the novena or a feast is concerned so your parish priest is there village heads are there and other christians are there so like whole village is represented so here, like it will have its own challenges, obstacles. But however, this is a central structure which is, which is in practice in the local church. So this could be given as a kind of a experience of the local to the universal church. So that that way, level of broadening, like one being employed to other. For example, you have conversation in the spirit. So suppose we have in the parish council, you already begin to employ the method. In the sense, parish priest will talk, then all will talk, all will respond on each other. And finally, we come to a conclusion. So this practice could be broadened, broadened to the College of Consultants or DC or DPC, Diocese and Pastoral Council. So one practice could be broadened to other churches or other areas. So this is the second uh, thing you need to keep in mind, level of broadening. Good. So having understood these two levels, level of deepening, level of broadening, we go to the roadmap roadmap of the diocesan consultation for the second se session of the Senate in 2024. Number one, general objective. So this is the objective to identify the paths that we could follow and the tools that we could adopt in our different contexts and circumstances in order to be a synodal church in mission. So earlier you remember when we talked about the diocesan phase, it was only about synodal church, but now synodal church in mission so you keep in mind the word mission and try to see how different paths could be adopted different tools could be used in our different context and circumstances the guiding question is how can we be a synodal church in mission maybe in the parish in the deanery or in the diocese then what is the reference point the synthesis report now, there are six, six steps in the roadmap. First one, step one, set up a team comprising of the diocese and contact person, synod coordinating team, representatives from parish priests, few men and women religious, representatives of lay associations, movements, young people, theologians, educationists, social workers, social science specialists, and canonists. Good, I shall explain. 
here already this is setting up is being done by the local RDD. So Bishop appoints a team. Already you are a diocesan contact person. Then we had a team that in the first phase, senior coordinating team. Then now what we have to do, local ordinary is a bishop, diocesan contact person, team members. Then some priests from the diocese could be taken. Some women and men religions from the CRI. Representatives of lay associations, if you have any movements, young people, theologians. Suppose there is a seminary in your neighborhood, you call some academic uh, faculty members or your own experts in different theological fields and schools, educationists, social workers, and if possible, current lawyer, maybe a, a chancellor or a judicial vicar could assist. So now the team could be between 20 to 30 persons. So not more than 30 persons, because again, you remember, this is not discussion. This discussion is not going to go to parishes or deaneries. No, this is only deliberation. So we need a serious audience and a serious group which will really work on the document because it needs a lot of understanding to run through the document and comprehend it. That's it. The team must be smaller, about 20 to 30 persons. So this we proposed to be set up by 31st December, but in many dioceses it was not possible because of festive celebrations or even because of floods in a few places and other circumstances. But now we could consider maybe till by 15th January we set up the team. Maybe DCP, you have a key role. Maybe you could tell the local ordinary, even if you propose, like these are the members, could be followed. And you see that the neighboring people are there so that they are able to come to the deliberation uh, in the one sitting, when sitting together. Good. That's step one. Step two, online training on the consultation process to the local ordinaries, ISS and contact person, senior team members. So here, in fact, what we are having now is the online training. Yesterday we had day before, so we thought that we were having three sessions so that all people are able to participate. On the first day we had 63 participants, yesterday we had 43, and now we are about more or less about more than 37. So we have these many participants. I think all have come to understand and the process through this training. Then step three, distribute the synthesis report to the team members for reading and reflection. So once the team is set up, to take the senior synthesis, either you can take copies from the ATC, the printed book, or you can print a PDF for the team, or you can distribute in an electronic form the PDF file, so called 41 page document, to all the team members. And they shall read and reflect by 31st January. And step four choose a day for an in presence meeting, not online, in presence, in case a discussion on the worksheet, the worksheet which will we'll see shortly using the conversation spirit method that is i u v so that every voice is listened to and reflected and discerned upon in this deliberation that has to complete by 29 february 24 and the third one draft that's step five draft the report answering all the 10 questions in the worksheet full report not to exceed three a4 size pages so your work is only to bring forth three A4 size pages of the synthesis of the deliberation by 15th March. Then once it is ready, step six, get the report validated by the local ordinary and mail the file in PDF to synodindia at gmail.com, not later than 25th March. So this has to be signed by the local ordinary. So the last date to submit is 25th March. So now three months we have. First month for reading, second month for discussing, third month for drafting. Once again, first month for discussing, sorry, reading, then the team, not all the diocesan members, only the 30, 20 to 30 group members, the synod discussion group members. Okay, second one, discussion. That will just happen on one day. It may take three hours to five hours, depending on the speed with which the group works. Then next one, draft the report and send to us after getting it signed by the local ordinary. So this is the roadmap. The six steps. I pause here. If you have any doubt on the roadmap, you are welcome. Then we'll have the discussion on the worksheet. Is the roadmap clear? Okay. Fine. Good. We go to the third one, the final one, the worksheet. That's very simple. Uh, okay. Yes, you agree. 
uh, father. Yes, sir, Grace. Uh, yeah, what I'm asking about roadmap, you yes, are sir. asking only 30 people. You know, you're asking only 30 people to know the whole process. The rest of them will remain uh, tabula rasa. We don't know anything about this okay. synod. Why can't okay. we take it to the deaneries if possible? Those dioceses which are possible, take it to the deaneries so that okay. everybody, everybody is know how. Because okay. many of the priests or religious sisters will remain uh, out of the whole process, you know, at least to bring that awareness. We can, at the first stage, take it to the people and form that expert committee at the later stage. Okay. Uh, since uh, we have little two or three months, some dioceses where we can take the process at the okay. bottom. <laughs> Okay, no, because my fear, my fear, it will remain again at the periphery top level, and then we will do this wishy washy job and send the report, and it will have uh, finally who is supposed to implement this, this synod which comes out. You will say, ah, take this now, <laughs> ready made uh, copy. They will say, I ah, keep it on the shelf. <laughs> that is okay. what is my fear. Is. Thank you, thank you, Grace, for this insight. Okay. Thank you, Grace. Thank you. Okay. This is good. My just my my comment. <laughs> yes, your Grace. Thank you, Grace. Father C B, then Father Sebastian. Yeah, C B. Am I audible? Yes, Father. Visible yeah. as well. Okay. So C B from Gandhinagar Rice in Gujarat. So with reference to what uh, his Grace Elias Gonzalo says, Nagpur Bishop, I would say. We keep up this roadmap with the time limit or time frame, and then uh, the rest leave it to the dioceses. If they want okay. to go through, go through, go, go, take the process into each parish, deanery, and the whole diocesan level, left to them. Very good. And that also would be good, as Bishop it's said. That, okay. uh, that is left to the bish bishop and the local rotaries. It is good that uh, a larger community. A larger person is being given stage to know this, then do it. But uh, keep up this framework and the time limit. Okay. Thank you, Father Sibi. Thank you. Father Sebastian, then Father Maria Ignasi. Uh, I, I feel that the final reporting, the date could be finalized. As far as the formation of the team and the discussions and all this should be left to the diocese. Okay. Fine, Father. Okay. Thank you, Father. Father Marie Ignacy. Not there. You could unmute, Father. I think God disconnected. Very good. So we go to the third section. Good. Thank you. Thank you, Your Grace. Thank you, dear Father C B and Sebastian. Good. We go to the third one. I share my screen with you. The worksheet. The worksheet is attached together with the CCBA President's Circular. Good. So now we have uh, now confusion. So the local ordinaries, the bishops, first they initially received a worksheet which was called as possible worksheet. So this was given by the Synod Secretariat. I am showing to you on the screen. So see, this is possible worksheet which was sent to all the local ordinaries. But now we have worked out this present worksheet based on the possible worksheet, like modifying some areas so that we are able to clarify and make things better. So that way, the present worksheet, what we are going to use for our deliberation is here. It will read Conference of Catholic Bishops of India, Dice Consultation for the Second Session of the Synod in 24 worksheet. So kindly use this worksheet and to be filled in by the DCP, endorsed by the local ordinary, and mailed as a PDF to Synod India, latest by 25th March 24. Good. We have a table, diocese, name of the diocese, local ordinary, name of the bishop or the administrator, number of persons consulted. So maybe here we need not rep write representation, but the total numbers, how many persons were in the team. And as our Archbishop uh, said, like more persons could be consulted and that number could be increased here, adding the numbers here. Then DCP, the name of the diocese and contact person, 
or the secretary would did the composition of the report. Then, question number one. Steps taken in your diocese, A, to convey the experience of the October 23 assembly, B, to work on the synthesis report, C, to disseminate the synod's letter to the people of God. Here, in fact, as our Archbishop Gonsalves mentioned, here already we should have done something to reach other, the fruits of the synthesis report to our local church. So here we are going to, in fact, mention what we have done. So already through the deaneries or through workshops, seminars, recollections, or even to different parish feasts and other things, whether have we reached that. So it's a kind of a uh, self-examination. Maybe prior to the self-examination, as our Archbishop said, we can also do this exercise, then we can write here. So maybe we can convey the experience of the 23 assembly, like what went on, the, those three experiences. We can say this was part of non-bishops were there, this was an experience, this was a process. So this could be communicated to all. Then to work on the synthesis report. Already some dioceses have worked, for example, Archdiocese of Madras, Mailapu, then Diocese of Mangalore, Diocese of Udupi. They have already taken the synthesis report for their recollections and reunions, and they have already begun to work on the action plan. So here, some, some work that has been done on the synthesis report could be presented. Then third one, to disseminate the synod's letter to the people of God. So there was a letter which was sent from the synodal floor addressing all the people of God, like how they felt during the exercise. That could be made possible. There's already some dice have published it through their newsletters. Good. So this is to mention what we have done on these three. Good. Two, what can we do locally at church, parish, diocese, and national continent levels to continue learning synodality? So here, it proposes choose three priorities, one from each part from the 20 chapters of the synthesis report. So we said earlier there are 20 titles or 20 chapters, three parts. Select one from each. For example, we have here the we come to the last page of the 41 page. So here you have the full outline. So here you choose one from each. For example, here I choose part one people of poverty, or people in poverty. Or uh, suppose this one concerns you, baptismal identity. So take any one from here, maybe from here, women in the life, then from here, maybe mission in the digital environment. So take any one from each part. So totally it will make three. Like you have to read the entire document, but only for this question. So take any three and three priorities, the 20. Then three, choose three concrete initiatives to implement from, implement from the various proposals in the synthesis report that can be applied immediately at the local level. So you identify from these three uh, titles you have taken, three initiatives that you would implement. For example, we take that uh, same thing, that uh, social doctrine of the church be known to all the people. So what could be an initiative? Like we take an initiative of translating the document into our own regional language, or we make a summary of the document. So that could be one initiative. Like we are telling the church universal that we are into the process that we are doing already these initiatives. That's number two. Number three, what proposals can be made to concretely experiment with the synodal method of conversation in the spirit in the various meetings and assemblies and participatory bodies? So here the church asks us a question, whether this method is ideal for meetings. Maybe it proposes to be an ideal method, but already many reviews have come. They say this method is where it's boring because everybody has to wait. And this method takes a lot of time because in a time constraint situation, we can't employ the method because this method presupposes that everybody is free and everybody is free to listen without prejudice or without bias. So these types of reviews are also there. So now the church asks us whether this method could be employed in different meetings and different assemblies. Number four, how can we involve all the baptized more closely in the synodal process and how to listen more to those on the peripheries. Again, this is more or less like the question of our first diocesan phase, one of the 10 thematic nuclei, journeying companions, like all our journeying companions, it's like kind of a repetition. Maybe we can take the insights from our diocesan phase as well. Good. Number five, from among the matters for consideration, choose one or two topics to be explored in relation to local issues and have them drawn up by commission of theologians, canonists, and pastoral leaders. For example, one consideration is 
all the formation has to happen together. For example, rises and recollection. So the document tells like any type of formation has to include all people. So usually what we have recollection for the clergy. So now the document proposes like we invite the religious, we invite the lay faithful and all are together formed under the local ordinary. So now is it possible like we are able to call the priest, but is it possible to call the religious on a weekday or lay faithful on a weekday or how to shift this particular recollection day to a weekend? So that, well, this could be possible. So this under matters for consideration, you take one or two and try to see whether this is possible in the local church and how we can make it really possible through maybe some revisions of the dates, the time, or the procedure and guidelines, we can really make it. Or suppose we, another matter for consideration was like, how to be consistent in our understanding of poverty. So maybe at the diocese level, we make a policy, like all the celebrations in the parishes should take into consideration not to have pompous celebrations or very vibrant, but must be kind of a, a playing in a low key because understanding the, the poor, poor situation or the people in poverty. So this type of policies could be made. That is number five. Number six, identify and share two or three local resources and initiatives or good practices of synodality in your diocese. So this is for the so-called level of broadening. So suppose you have in your diocese, in your local church, some initiative which you want to share with the entire universal church, you are welcome to share in six. Then seven, how can we deepen the definition of understanding and understanding of synodality in our cultural context? So here's some cultural image. For example, earlier we proposed taking off our shoes. Like when we enter our homes, we take off our shoes. It's a kind of respect, kind of experiencing our vulnerability, or even a kind of being open to other person. So this gesture could be synodal gesture. For example, when we come for a meeting, we take off our shoes. Implication is like, I come with an open mind, respect, and I accept my vulnerability. So this type of cultural images, if you have in your local church, you are welcome to add here in seven. Eight, how can we implement and deepen the spiritual dimension of synodality? For example, already we have in, you know, we have in shrines and pilgrim centers in our dioceses, we have many people coming there, non-Christians and other denominational people. So all come there, for example, in a feast, there is a kind of synodal spiritual communion. So now how to deepen it? Like are they just coming for a cultic purpose or how can we take really that moment for as a spiritual uh, moment of communion? So that type of uh, thinking is expected in question number eight. Then last two, nine, reread the way Synodality is concretely lived in the participatory bodies such as parish pastoral councils, DPCs, and bishops' council. For example, bishops' councils usually comprise of bishops and archbishops. Maybe now, how we can take in non bishops, maybe the advocates or the auditors, how they can become part of bishops' council, whether it's possible, or how to uh, strike a balance, or how to encourage gender complementarity. So, in these bodies, that's number nine. Number 10. Proposed to formation centers and theological faculties, concrete initiatives for formation in synodality for the lay faithful, priests, and religious. Like whether lay faithful could be integrated and into the seminary formation on the one hand. And on the other hand, how they can they can contribute for seminary formation or religious formation. So these are some proposals you could present to the formation centers and theological faculties. And what follows is the highlights, which has been presented already. Good. I now stop here. If you have any doubt on this worksheet, you are welcome to ask. So kindly understand, like if you have nothing to share, just you can just write nil, like because it does not concern you directly. For example, number one, we have not done anything, just we have just received the document because there was no time or we were not aware of it. Just you can write nil. Or suppose no cultural image is there in your local church, just you could write nil. So we need not force ourselves into the discussion. The overall feeling is mission. And also let's keep in mind the church gives us one more chance to express our views. And all this synthesis will be sent direct to the Senate Secretary. So that we give a feeling that we all participated in this exercise. Good. I pause here. If you have any doubt or anything to be clarified, you are welcome. In the middle of the 
month of February, we'll have a kind of a review meeting to see how far we have reached so that we are able to encourage each other in the process. So I would recommend all the DCPs participate in the review meeting or the status report present meeting like to see and that would give us the best practices so that we can imitate from different churches. Good. Good in general on these three, on the synthesis report, on the roadmap or on the worksheet. Any doubt or anything you'd like to add? Good, fine. May I invite Sister Lalita Thomas to give her final words since she was a synodal participant <laughs> and she is also. Yeah, each one, as a, each one of you had a final word. Thank you very much, Father Yesu, for giving me this opportunity. I'm really blessed and um, thank God for this time of grace meeting every one of you who are at the grassroots level meeting the people and now again once again you'll be encountering everyone in this synodal journey and i'm grateful to god for having given me this opportunity to participate in the 16th general assembly of the synod on synodality and this whole month are being together uh, what really uh, helped us was the retreat that prepared us to enter into this um, mode of conversation in the spirit mainly for the purpose of discerning the will of God. It is we are not here on our own, but we are here with the mission of Jesus. And so to that retreat put us on the right track. And so it gave us the mind, the frame of mind, the uh, heart that was open, the humility that is needed to take off our shoes, to encounter, to participate, to listen, to share, and to discuss, discern. That's how the whole month went on. So conversation in the spirit does take time because we need to wait on the Lord, wait on the spirit to reveal to us the will of God. Our main purpose here together is to search for the ways in which the Lord wants us to take forward our journey forward as a church. In wherever we are in our locality, given our cultural context and all other issues that with we are related. So this experience of synodality was something very unique and great and something very transforming. And that brought about a lot of transformation and conversion, personally speaking, for me and encountering global level bishops and other non-bishop members in Paul Sixth Hall was possible. And it was very cordial and um, uh, one of welcome a family gathering purely because of the retreat that helped us to come together in one mind, heart and spirit. So I wish that this also happens in all our diocese, deaneries and in our parishes, that in all our meetings that we have such experience of synodality. And that is a that is actually the longing and the wish and the desire and the dream of every member who participated in this Senate that everyone has such rich experience because at the end of the day, what matters is the experience that actually encounters us and not not anything else. So we have a time frame here. Um, Father Yesu had placed it very clearly. And um, I think uh, all of you also had time to express. And I, I truly appreciate what Father Bishop said, Father CB said, and one more person, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm forgetting the name, but you said that leave it. The time that we have to send to you is fixed. But what we do and your um, um, enthusiasm to reach this synodality and what happened at the synod to every one in your diocese is something that is to be appreciated and that is what is actually vatican is looking forward secretary okay. that it is reached out to everybody the letter the document and and though we have because we still have time till october 24 to still carry on on this journey general journey of all that has happened so we have enough time so we are not the time is not a constraint for us except for these we have few questions that we need to really you know ponder on and spend some time on that and looking at the life of the church in our respective area. Apart from that, I think we have a lot of time to read, to make it our own journey in this, in this work of um, mission. Thank you for this opportunity. And at this time, I take uh, the 
liberty to say also my availability to share my, our experience at the vatican um, with with you in your diocese anytime online offline i am available because that is another thing that is requested from the vatican that we give testimony to our experience at the vatican during this synod so i am ready and i'll be happy to do that and i'm really blessed and this i would say this is another experience of synodality as we came together virtually we listened we shared and i thank you for that thank you thank you sister lalita for your words of uh, testimony and for making yourself available for different exposures to the local churches thank you good we call it a day i thank your graces your excellencies the regional deputy secretaries, diocese and contact persons on behalf of the CCB office parents and the national coordinating team represented here by Mr. Nigel Fernandez and Sister Lalita. Thank you one and all for your avail availability. And let us keep going. And I feel really encouraged by your presence, especially the presence of the archbishops and the bishops. It is really encouraging to us that we are into the process. Good. Now may I request His Grace, Most Reverend Elias Gonzalez to Lead us into a final prayer and give us a blessing. Uh, on behalf of all of us, uh, thank you, Father Karuna. Thank you. Okay. What's your name? Karuna. Karuna Nidhi. <laughs> okay. Okay, so thank you and Sister Lalita, thank you for briefing us for, with regard to your experiences. Uh, I think the best prayer we can say is the, the Jubilee prayer. Jubilee if prayer. you have uh, on your computer, uh, Father Karuna, maybe you can uh, project it. Do you have? Yes, yeah, you don't. just a second. It's there that we can, we can recite it silently, all of us. Because that will be more meaningful. Yes, Your Grace. Yeah. We just sign ourselves in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 We keep a moment of silence till Father Karuna Nidhi projects it. Grace projected. It's the part of the spiritual conversation that we keep silence after listening to one another. Now we listen to God. What God wants we to do. Altogether, we recite the Jubilee prayer. Father in, Father heaven, in heaven, may the faith you have given us in your in Son, Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, our brother, brother. And, and the flame of charity and kindle in, in our hearts, in our hearts by, the by the Holy Spirit, Spirit. reawaken, reawaken in, us in us the blessed hope, the blessed hope for, the for the coming of your kingdom. Your kingdom. May, May your, your grace, grace transform, transform us, us into tireless cultivators of the seeds of the gospel. Seeds that make May those seeds transform from within both humanity and the whole cosmos in the sure expectation of a new heaven and a new earth. When with the powers of evil vanquished, your glory will shine eternally. May the grace of the Jubilee be awakened in us, pilgrims of hope, a yearning for the treasures of heaven. May that same grace spread the joy and peace of our Redeemer throughout the earth. To you, our God, 
eternally blessed. Be glory and praise forever. Amen. Amen. We intercede all these prayers and all our efforts to Mary, our mother, who accompanies us in this journey of our faith and as the pilgrims of hope. We recite, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God bless all of you. Thank, thank you. you and have a good thank day. You. Thank you, Your Grace. Thank you, Your Grace, Father. Thanks, Father Jesus. Thank you, Thank you, Excellent. Thank you, Anna Parson. Thank you, Sister Lalita. Thank you, Mr. Nigel. Thank you, Regional Deputy Secretaries and Diocesan Contact Persons.